sorry. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief bio of these amazing people. So, Katie is a UK based mixed media artist whose primary interest is creating a fusion of graphic street style with photorealism aspects to tackle contemporary issues such as personal representation, mental health, identity, and breaking stereotypes. One of the main goals within her practice is on the other page, to stimulate the viewer through vibrant colours and dynamic brush strokes. So, our next artist is Susie. Susie's done this before, welcome. Not with us, but she's a, she's a very experienced art battleist. Is that the word? Art battleist? I'm just going to find a word. Art warrior, I like that. Bear with me, this is the first time I've done this, sorry. something different each time based on her mood. While she learned to paint with oil, she has worked with acrylic for over 15 years. She enjoys storytelling and mixed media. Welcome Susie, thank you very much for coming. I'm now going to introduce Bonnie once I find a... Oh, that. There we go. Bonnie, Bonnie is a multidisciplinary artist working primarily in oils. She likes to paint surreal, colourful landscapes with figurative characters inspired by mythology and pop culture. Her favourite stage of working is the beginnings of a painting. Dun, dun, dun. And Clover. Clover is a first year art student and she is here and she has... Thank you. Guts, which was the word I was looking for. Clover likes to explore the relationships between childhood Filipino folklore tales and the harsh brutalities that may linger behind them. Sometimes she thinks that leaving a painting unfinished tells a story with a focus on each mark telling his own story. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And lastly, we have Nancy. I'm not lastly, sorry, sorry, sorry. I am. Nancy, good. Um, Try my best. I'm trying my best. Nancy Violet is an interdisciplinary, I bet no one else can say that. Interdisciplinary <laughs> fine artist working in textiles, painting, clay, installation, and performance. Her work explores the themes of eco feminism, spirituality, and the inner child, considering parallels between the way we interact with Earth and gender structures in society, reclaiming connection with the organic world as a woman, and how these practices. Enrich our lives spiritually. I'm very excited about your work. What is going to happen tonight? And we have also got Leilani June. Leilani's practice is underpinned by deep spiritually embodied connection to the seasonal, cyclical, ecological communities. Their work is under, underpinned by the utilization of the body within the temporal context of life drawing, using found charcoal and foraged clay to create a visual language and space to further transcend the grounded experience of existence through creating one with one's whole being interwoven with those with that of those in front of them. This is very exciting. You are about to witness very, very fresh and very exciting people making beautiful work in front of you. You are very lucky people. Right. I need somebody who can show me the time. Or my watch, or my phone. 8 12. Um, I need my phone so I can actually. Sorry. Time it. Could you? Time it. I'll come to you. Right. Let the battle commence. You have 20 minutes. And like that, we are underway. Hello, everybody that is currently watching Art Battle live on the stream. Tonight, I will be your color commentator, Max Oral. If you have watched Art Battle previously, you might recognize me from previous Art Battle Londons. Sadly, I'm without my amazing co-host tonight, so it'll be me, myself, and I guiding you through these amazing artists and trying to have a little bit of a deep dive into the art 
that we are going to be seeing in this first round. So, we are up and running. I believe that currently, um, what I'm currently doing on the stream is exactly what you guys are seeing. So I'm going to try my best to work for each canvas and go by and just give you a little bit of details about the artist. Let's we'll be talking about sort of like moods, how I'm feeling about how the different techniques are being used. And yeah, I guess we'll just get absolutely stuck in. So in this first round, if you call the introduction, we have got six amazing artists with going from, I believe, left to right. We have got Susie Bimbo, we have got Katie White, we have got Bonnie Devore, we've got Clover Wang, we've got Nancy Violet Downs, and we've got Lamani June in this first round. So already we're noticing a couple of different approaches. If we go to the middle canvas, we can see that already there's a really solid base being put down. Now, in my experience, what a lot of different artists um, like to do in the beginning of our battle is they like to be very clever and they like to get down a good solid backgrounding base of sometimes, whether that be um, just like big bright colours, lots of paint, or just something to really set up their canvas. Whilst if we go all the way to the far right hand side, which I believe would be Lulani's canvas, we can notice that there are some, uh, what I believe, some little bits of sketching taking place, which is yet again another tactic very, very commonly used in our battle, which is to do the complete opposite, which is to really just start getting those fine details down. Oh, I believe our, ooh, I believe our camera is on the move, which is fantastic, which means we can get a good closer look and really get into the nitty gritty of these amazing canvases. So the first canvas we will be looking at, and oh wow, okay. So really, really strong start. I believe that would be Susie. Oh, oh an amazing start as well from Katie. So already getting the beginnings of a figure there. Uh, this would be Bonnie. We're getting, yeah, again, as I mentioned, already really getting down that amazing color. I believe next would be Clover. We can already see what looks to be the um, early signs of performers or clowns, I believe. Uh, then we've got Nancy, yet again, working on those really fine specifics in terms of getting some detail down. And finally, we've got Lani on the far right-hand side. Well, I'm noticing, uh, I believe, maybe an apple for reference. Okay, so... Wow, amazing. So, I believe this is, I believe this would be the fourth canvas in, so that'd be Clover. Looking at maybe some for performance history, um, I'm a fifth generation clown myself, so to actually see um, um, some old fashioned sort of performers being put down on the canvas sounds really, really exciting. Okay, so let's go back to our first canvas with Susie. Oh, just a, a little bit of a knock of the reference photo there. But loving this luscious pink just being put down on the canvas. We're already seeing the really smooth techniques just being laid down on the canvas. Honestly, making it look so effortless and so smooth. Really, really getting a good start to this art battle. If we go take a look now on our second canvas, I believe we're checking with Katie, we can see just honestly this really lovely figure that is developing in the foreground, but also kind of really blending in with the background as well. So really, really interesting to see the um, the figure emerging with this, yet yeah, again, these luscious, luscious pinks coming out. I believe we're now stopping by our sixth canvas, which would be Lalani June. And wow, already like, Getting the edges of the, what I believe is... No, I stand corrected. It wasn't an apple. I believe it was a pomegranate. There we go. We can see Lilani working away to get the pomegranate figure really laid on the canvas. Uh, I believe that this would be Nancy, if I stand corrected. Really starting to really play with... Um, yep, there we go. We got some confirmation. Fantastic. So, Clover really really striking. I'm really, really loving um, the the playfulness of the characters being presented, uh, especially when sort of like representing what almost looks like an um, old fashioned clowning, maybe some Piro. So really, really playful nature that's really representative of the art style, not only the form of what um, I believe the artist is trying to achieve. We have got Bonnie really just working at an electric pace there to get so much down on the canvas already. And then this would be Katie White. Yet again, just focusing on the figure that's being put down onto the canvas, really, really emoting uh, with a lot of the thicker lines and the blacks of the surrounding of the eyes, really, really starting to come through. 
and we are back with our first campus. And oh, wow. Honestly, the playfulness between the whites, reds, and oranges, but also the highlights of pinks, really, really coming like strong with the canvas. So, really, really clever usage of color early doors into this first round. I believe we are taking a little bit of a zoom back out. So, we are now seeing a few of the works a little bit more um, sort of like overview now that we've got a little bit more context, a little bit more detail. Honestly, so excited with uh, the way that everyone has started. Everyone is working very, very um, quickly to get their, their um, pieces of art onto the canvas. Obviously, because this is our battle. You've only got 20 minutes to actually get these things down. So all the artists so far really working at a very, very just amazing pace, displaying some absolutely stunning skills. There we go. We can see some of our lovely audience on the floor there. Okay, so... Just a reminder, if you want to get involved with Art Battle and you want to vote for any of your favourites, then please go to artbattle.com, sign up to vote, it literally takes two seconds, and it means you can get involved with these amazing artists. And as I always like to say, show the artists some love. You guys are doing such an amazing job, be, the, be them the ones that go on to go to the final, or be them ones that um, sadly do not go through. All the artists are producing such amazing works, but also, not only that, you can take any of the pieces of art home. Yes, you can bid to get the pieces of art. I mean, I believe in the last art battle in London, there was a, a Danny DeVito piece, which I was absolutely had my heart set on. And um, I was obviously actively trying to take that canvas home because it was an amazing piece of work. And you can do that too. Okay, really, really starting to sink into that first round. I believe we're looking over like more than half the time used up so the art is really picking up the pace oh we've got some um spackling happening so we've uh, been we've been treated to some really really lovely fluid brush strokes and now we're getting some really good texture still using those oranges and pinks to lay down our first canvas and that would be Susie we're now moving again to Katie on our second canvas and, oh wow this really fluid um blue that I really didn't see coming is now being uh, just displayed on the edges of the canvas, uh, kind of highlighting the hair. Such a beautiful expression uh, being displayed by Katie's work at the moment. Very, very evocative. Wow, Bonnie, Bonnie yet again, so, so impressed with the speed that Bonnie was able to really get so much down on the canvas and really bringing some sort of like beautiful still life to it. And, oh, wow, okay, so Clover just bringing in some typography in the bottom right side of the canvas, really playing with that, that jester, that old theatrics uh, with the imagery being displayed there. So very, very impressed. I believe we just uh, bobbed over to Nancy as well, doing really well to lay down those covers and those colors, uh, should I say. And then we're back with Lilani, laying down this uh, this pomegranate, but really, really playing with like these sketch marks, some scrubbings, there's some blues in there. Honestly, Lilani bringing so many different techniques to the, to the table here. So very, very impressive stuff indeed. Just having a look back over there. So we're just paying a little visit back to Nancy, who is just slowly and subtly getting those colors realized onto the canvas, like really working so, so impressively. And we're back to Cloven. Oh, I'll admit I'm absolutely adoring uh, what is being displayed on the canvas, like such an incredible style with the black line work and the paint. But she's really getting over the form of like artistry through the actual painting itself, which is no easy feat. I mean, I come from a, a theatrical background, so to see that displayed so well through just the actual paint itself is honestly truly remarkable. Wow, I'm only just noticing a couple of the reference pieces there at the top of the canvas for what I believe is Bonnie, which is those little fire ants. So really, really interesting to see the combination of fruit and ants in this uh, very, in this still life drawing. And then I guess we are back now with Katie. Just oh, such beauty that's being displayed on the canvases. Like, and same with Susie, actually. Both of them opting to go for uh, portraits of sorts, potentially self-portraits, I believe. Uh, from having a little sneak peek of their references, but both of them evoking such like different vibes. Like, I'm really fascinated by Susie's canvas because there is an expression that I can see uh, from their reference picture there at the top. It's going, ah, or something to that nature. <laughs> Sorry, that was an awful scream. 
but you really it's really ca captured the energy of that in that first canvas so amazing work by Susie we're now looking over Katie again and oh I just love the cascading of the blue with the pink it, it's like uh, as I mentioned earlier Katie's work is really playing with like what is in the foreground and the forefront of the, of the, um, the canvas so that's very very clever hopefully that will you know see her get some some plenty of votes okay wow honestly to get such um shading like that in such a short space of time is just nothing short of impressive so really really good still life being displayed there but um oh clover is absolutely just coming here to bring the heat really really impressed by the vibrancy and the expression like I think I really think this is playing to my uh, my artistic sensibilities, as I mentioned, being from a theatrical background. So very, very, very uh, impressed with this particular canvas. So Nancy uh, starting to get some lovely shades of blue and yellow in the background, but what I believe is almost the impressions of a bird or an eagle potentially the left. So really, really interesting to see. We are back with Lalani and our pomegranate and. This is so interesting because I don't think I've actually seen this in an art battle before, but I believe that Lilani is using leaves and paint to spackle on uh, and use the texture of the leaf to really get over the texture on the canvas, which honestly, thoroughly unique. We've seen people use paint markers. We've seen people use paints quite a lot. We've seen people use um, uh, just your standard you know, pencils. We've seen crayons, but I don't think I've ever seen the application of a leaf before. So very, very interesting development on that canvas in particular. Honestly, all of our first round competitors are really just bringing their own sense of style through so, so fluidly. I don't know about you watching at home, but I am so blown away with the the, the level of quality because in our battle, we, we are so lucky that we get some of the most amazing artists. And every single time I commentate on these events, I always say, do you know what? I don't think there's any way we could possibly get better. And somehow each round just goes from strength to strength and we see such amazing pieces of work. So honestly, show all the artists in this first round just a hell of a lot of love. Get involved with their canvases. Try and take them home and bid with them online. And of course, as I always say, show the artists some love. Get involved and vote for your favorites. Oh wow, a development there as well for Lilani, not using, uh, not only using the uh, leaf to actually put down stuff, but now using the liberal application of the fingers and the fingernails. So, very very unique approach to. I don't know, actually, no, I believe that might be. I think that might be the use of coloured chalk. Okay, so a little bit of a shift. I believe all of the other artists are predominantly working with uh, paint, potentially a mixture of oil-based and water-based. But I believe on their final end canvas, Lilani is working with coloured chalk. So going from artist number one, left all the way down to right, it is Susie Bimbo on canvas number one. We've got Katie White on canvas number two. On canvas number three, we have Bonnie Beaver, or Bonnie Bevore. Uh, on canvas number four, we have got Clover Dwang. On canvas number five, we have got Nancy Violet Downs. And on canvas number six, we have got Lilani June. All of these artists really just trying to get as much as they can now as they are surely running out of time. But all of them have done such impressive work to really um, just get the actual work onto the canvas. I think that's the thing that really impresses me the most about Art Battle is it's such a fun competition, but there's such high stakes to get your art and your, your expression in 20 minutes. It's no easy feat, but all of the artists in this first round are absolutely bringing their A game. So we are, if you're looking at the first two canvases between Susie and Katie, we're looking at um, potentially self-portrait or figures, both of them displaying very, very different emotions with almost like an anxiousness and maybe um, a release on Susie's canvas. But on Katie's, there being a softness and a stillness, like a, um, like just like a very um, still wilted beauty, which is really, really just amazing to see. Okay, we are now over the shoulder of Lilani and Nancy. And I guess we're now moving on to Bonnie. Oh, and the typography. Let's see what we can see. It says, oh, wow. It says there is a face at every turn. Honestly, that's that's so menacing, but in like a really sort of um, 
very captivating way, especially like maybe playing on the um, the clowning a little bit there, and the um, sort of the comedy and tragedy that you find very commonly um, with sort of like that era of clowning and the more so like the uh, impero clowns as it would be. Okay, we're now over the shoulder of Firstly Canvases with Susie and Katie. Just both of them have got such unique styles, but one thing I could definitely draw comparison to with these artists is they are really both commanding their colours so well. Such different vibrancies. We've got more, we've got some vibrant pinks, blues and blacks going on with Katie's canvas. And then on Susie's, we've got oranges, pinks, slight blues and blacks as well. So both of them are working so, so incredibly hard with their colours and it's coming across so amazingly. So very, very impressed by the um, command of their colours. We're now going to be going over the shoulder of Bonnie there. And so Bonnie is working really just so intricately now, just trying to get those white outlines, trying to get some of the shading on the, uh, well, I believe our, tom I think they might be tomatoes. Yes, I believe they are. So the ants uh, are crawling over the tomatoes and just getting like the really fine details to really get over the shading. And yeah, again, Bonnie's um, shading uh, displayed on the canvas has been so, so incredibly impressive. I believe we have gone to Nancy really quick. I really love um, the use of colour in a completely separate way to the first two canvases. There seems to be a almost a muted nature with the colours, very soft in the way that it shifts from the uh, the rising sun potentially and the um, bird-esque figure. With such stark contrast then moving to Clover, Clover working with um, blacks and gold, maybe just a slight hint of burgundies but really using the black and the gold to give across this very impactful harshness. And now we're seeing some of the drips coming from these uh, these clowns, these performers' eyes. Honestly, I, I'm adoring this canvas in particular. I'm loving the boldness and I'm loving the harshness, not only of the color, but also the typography statements and saying that there are faces everywhere. Getting some lovely coloured chalk work in to really just get the centre of the pomegranate, which it is by our artist Lalani. Working so incredibly hard. I just I love the little hint of blue that's just surrounding the edge of the pomegranate. It's something that personally I don't think I would have ever even considered in terms of like using as a highlight colour, but it's really, really effectively doing the job to get that across. So massively impressed with the actual choice there to go with that blue. There is a face everywhere you turn. Oh, honestly. Typography uh, used in art battle has been used in so many different ways. Um, it was uh, a couple of days ago when I was commentating on Art Battle London, we uh, we had somebody um, writing a word that sadly I will not be allowed to say on the stream, but um, I think you can, you can guess what it is if I say it was a see you next Tuesday in bold green typography. And honestly, me and my co-host at the time were just absolutely adoring it. Wow, okay, just... Honestly, Susie working so well with the spackle and the colours. I am I'm genuinely blown away. Not only the capturing of what I believe is the, like it potentially hers or maybe a friend's face, but the capturing of the emotion in combination with such use of the blending of the colours and these lines of texture being drawn to almost obscure the face as if the scream is being muted. It's it's honestly stunning. So so impressed by Susie. Oh, wow, honestly, the capturing of the figure by Katie is nothing short of just, just beautiful. A lot of the times when I commentate for these things, obviously I try and give um, just my sort of like general artistic thoughts, but sometimes when you're presented with a canvas, all you can do is just stop and be in awe of something and go, this is just beautiful. And Katie's work that we're seeing now is exactly that, such beautiful stillness in the eyes, such a softness in the face, and such chaos and colour going with the background and weaving with the hair, so... Well, oh no, sorry, I believe, I believe I'm getting mixed up. I do apologise, viewers. It's saying that uh, canvas number two is in fact Susan, canvas number one would be Katie. Hopefully they do not hold that against me. <laughs> Wow, okay, such really lovely uses 
of black and yellow to really just get over the little shading um, areas, but also just to kind of give it this really pleasantly reflective nature. I feel that um, it's, uh, Bonnie's really capturing the light so incredibly well in this particular work. Um, compared to some of the other artists, but like a very particular point is the commanding of the shading and the way that it seems to be um, working with the canvas and hitting it. So very, very impressed by that specific command uh, within their art. Oh, and that is it. That is our first round over. Such amazing, amazing um, art being displayed. We're now just getting a little bit of a panorama of all of the art displayed. Wow, what a first round. Of you guys. So well done. Thank you so much. Okay, so it's up to you guys to vote. Remember, you can. we're going to end up with two of these wonderful artists at the end of your voting process so please cast your votes thank you very much amazing stuff and as mentioned by amazing host tonight it is now your turn to vote. If you sign up at artbattle.com, you can sign up to uh, vote for any of the pieces of art that you really feel you want to see again. A couple of things that I always think is important to bear in mind, not only is to vote for your favorite piece of art, but also who you think gave your favorite performance as an artist? Whose techniques were you really inspired by? Whose um, actual process really excited you? And who would you want to see um, develop and use that more in the upcoming rounds? So. This is what I believe, uh, Lalani. Amazing work of a pomegranate there. Such stunning use of chalk. Oh, wow. Okay. Nancy's. I'm only just noticing the figures done in the pink there. That is Nancy Violet Downs. Wow. Such beautiful figures that on, on a first glance you might have not noticed, but I'm only just noticing this now. Amazing. Oh, such amazing work, which I believe is from Clover. Yes, Clover de Wang. God, the capturing of the performers, the heroes, the blacks and the golds, the boldness. There is a face in every turn I take. Oh, I only just noticed the last bit of the sentence. Wow. It's so beautiful and representative performance culture, but so haunting as well. We have got Bonnie. Bonnie. Oh, honestly, such stunning command of light that I, I really... It has been something that I've not seen all too much of in previous art battles, uh, done so specifically, just absolutely lasered on. So we're seeing the ants surrounded by the tomatoes, and the commanding of shading and light is so, so impressive. Amazing piece of work. Then we have got Susie, who I believe I've been accidentally calling, um, <laughs> I've been casing the entire night, but this is Susie, I do apologise. Such beauty captured, such amazing technique. Amongst all the chaos of these brush strokes, there's such a beautiful stillness and acceptance within the face. Such a beautiful softness. So amazing, amazing work from Susie. And then finally, we have got Katie White on our first canvas. And, oh, what a day. The capturing of the scream, the raw emotion from that scream that's been captured. And meets all this texture and beautiful command of colour bold techniques being used, but also such bold colours. Honestly, I am, I'm really blown away with uh, this particular canvas. I hope that you guys at home are as well. And I believe that is all of our contestants for the first round. So I'm going to go on a quick break just to grab myself a, uh, a cheeky um, hot water and lemon because it's important to keep your voice rested. <laughs> but... Before I go, a final thought for that first round is, what a first round, what amazing work. Please, please, please show the artists some love. Get involved at artbattle.com. Follow us on Instagram. If you go to Art Battle, you can see any of the updated events. As I mentioned, I've done stuff for Art Battle London. I'll be doing some more commentating next week, I believe, for another Art Battle, which I won't say too much about just yet. And yeah. Get involved, try and, you know, show the artists some love, try and find um, all of the individual artists, which I believe you can find on our Instagram. And I will see you lovelies in a brief moment.
on the fins. So when you're looking at it, go like that. Okay, everybody. So anyone who hasn't yet passed their vote, could you please do so? And then we can uh, photograph in winning two canvases and go to the next round. Hello and good evening everybody joining the Art Battle stream live. My name is Martin Sorrell and I've got the utmost pleasure of being your host tonight for tonight's Art Battle in Bournemouth. If you're just joining the stream, then sadly you've just missed an amazing first round. But if you're still viewing with us then, hello. I hope everyone at home watching the stream is having a fantastic time. And what a first round, eh? Honestly, such an amazing and strong first round. If you're just joining us, then I will just quickly cover some of the artists from left to right. So, on a canvas number one that you can see on the far left of your screen, that was Katie White. On the, on the second canvas there, I believe that was Susie Bimbo. On canvas number three, we had Bonnie DeVore. On canvas number four, we had Clover DeWang. On canvas number five, we had Nancy Violet Downs. On canvas number six, we had Lalani June. So, we had a mixture of amazing colorful portraits we had still lifes that captured the light and the shading so perfectly with some tomatoes we've had canvases that showed some typography and a little bit of a haunting nature mixed with some old sort of vaudevillian performing we've also had some amazing muted colors and tiny dancing pink figures etched into canvases and we've also had just the most amazing chalk work displayed with our pomegranate so we have been honestly spoiled in this first round. For those of you still watching with us at home, this is your reminder to vote for your favourite. And as I always like to say here in our battle, show the artists some love. It's such an amazing um, and impressive thing to come onto our battle and to try and achieve such a strong amount in such a short amount of time, within 20 minutes.
so I believe we are just still commencing with the voting. Honestly, I cannot wait to see who's won this first round. I honestly, and I know I seem to say this um, every time I commentate on uh, these events, but I wouldn't want to be the person to choose who would win out of these. I think all of these works are so deserving to go to the next round. But sadly, only two of our first round competitors can go into the final round tonight. So, it is up to you, our amazing R Battle audience, to vote for your favourites. So get those votes in, show the artists some love, and hopefully we'll be able to see some amazing performances that we saw in the first round replicated in the second. And if you are just joining us for the R Battle stream, then you are in for an absolute treat because we have had such amazing artists in round one, but we've got some amazing artists coming up in round two. I'll now quickly briefly go through the artists that we are going to be seeing uh, performing live in our second round. The, the artists that you can look forward to seeing will be, on our campus number one, will be Thomas Farrow. On campus number two, we will have Lucen Art. That is L-U-C-A-N Art, Lucen Art. On campus number three, we have Leopoldo. On campus number four, we have Isabel Keynes. On campus number five, we will have Andy Nil. And on campus number six, we will have Sotep. Ooh. I do apologize. We are literally doing this for the first time. Please be patient. Um, we just have a little bit of a problem. The artists of the stars of the show, they are not messing up, so I'm really grateful for that. Thank you, guys. Um, I hope everyone's had a chance to vote. Um, we're now going to take a short break whilst we swap over for round two. Um. Just getting an announcement there from our lovely host this evening. So to all of you anticipating the second round and watching at home, obviously I've just briefly gone through the artists we should be able to see, but don't worry, I will be updating you as we go throughout the night. You'll be going through what round, what artists have featured tonight, and I will be your guide pretty much in terms of live colour commentary for what we are doing for each round. So. Thank you, thank you very much for joining me. I'm very, very happy to be brought back and commentating on Art Battle. It is gutting that I don't have my amazing co-host that I co-host um, Art Battle London with me. But if anything, it just means you get to really sit with me as we go through these art pieces together and we just get to really get sunken into it. So the anticipation always kills me waiting for the next round. I can only imagine what the artists themselves must be feeling in this situation. any of the audience joining us on the stream that maybe are a little bit new to our battle essentially what our battle is is we get is we get amazing amazing artists to come and do a challenge the challenge in question is they have 20 minutes to do a fresh piece of artwork using any techniques any styles we've seen people use tape paint pencils graffiti markers you name it but they only get 20 minutes to try and wow and impress the crowd, not only with the art they produce, but their performances, the displaying of their technique, and showing off their personal brand and style of art. Once the 20 minutes is up, it is then going down to the public that is actually live in attendance, in this case, in the amazing city of Bournemouth, but also you, yes, you, amazing people at home. You get to vote on who then goes through to our final. So we have two rounds where we have uh, between five to six artists. I believe we also have wild cards. The wild card is literally somebody in attendance that can sign up at the beginning of the night to then throw their hat in the ring and to also be in this art battle as a artist themselves. We've seen some amazing words come from some of the, um, the wild cards in previous 
um, our battles, especially in our Battle London. So once we have the first winners, so the best two people, or should I say the um, the highest voted count in the first two rounds, because obviously all of our artists are amazing, they will then go through automatically to the final. We will then have a second round where we'll do the same thing again with the fresh batch of artists getting their 20 minutes, and then again, the highest voted count, two artists, book their place in the final. The final will then be the artists that went through from round one and round two, duking it out again to win the art battle of the evening and to be our evening's champion. And that's essentially it. It's really that simple. But don't let that deceive you. Doing a piece of art like this in 20 minutes is not only such an amazing testament to these artists' skill, but also it's an incredibly brave and bold thing to do because getting anything done in 20 minutes is incredibly hard. I mean, I'm a very relatively uh, new to actually um, doing my own art myself. I'm very passionate about art, but I've only been recently starting to do it. And I genuinely think that some of the pieces of artwork that I've seen uh, done in 20 minutes would take me at least a full week to even achieve such amazing pieces. So massively, massively impressed with the artists that get involved. Ooh. Apologies, audience. I believe we've got an announcement. So I believe we have got some of our artists getting ready for the second round. If you are just joining us live on the stream. Hello and good evening. My name is Max Earl. I will be your commentator for tonight's stream of Art Battle Bournemouth. If you are just joining us, then you have missed an absolutely stunning first round with some absolutely amazing artists who I will make sure to cover throughout the evening. But to give a bit of a reminder, we saw some amazing works done by... Uh, the artists Susie Bimbo, Katie White, Bonnie Bavore, Clover De Wang, Nancy Violet Downs, and Alani June. These six artists absolutely smacked their first round. And so I believe I'm still currently awaiting information on who actually went through from that first round. But as soon as I get confirmation for you lovelies, I will make sure to keep you in the loop. As I will be your guide for tonight's art battle in terms of just going through the actual commentary and the colour commentating of the artists themselves giving you little tidbits and details but also just sharing my opinions and hopefully sharing those opinions with yourself and going through what we are seeing live and what these artists are trying to capture and really just trying to take it in and enjoying these amazing amazing artists doing what they do best which is art Please, please, anyone that's currently watching the stream, get involved with Art Battle. You can vote for any of the um, the artists that you see tonight for your absolute favourites. Not only that, but if you head to artbattle.com, you can actually bid for these amazing pieces of artwork and take them home. So if you've seen something tonight that has really wowed you and captured you, then not only can you show your love by voting for your favourite artist, but you could be so lucky to actually take one of these amazing pieces home. I believe it was the last, uh, the, uh, last art battle, it was uh, me and my amazing co-host, there was a Danny DeVito painting that uh, won uh, the first round, and both of us, we realised that if we uh, were live on stream, we probably would have gone into a bidding war over that particular piece of art, because we were both absolutely just blown away with it, but also 
As always, Sonny and Philadelphia fans, we couldn't resist. So absolutely get involved. Go to artbattle.com. That is artbattle.com that you can maybe see at the bottom left-hand screen of our stream. As well as following on Instagram at uh, battle. Uh, through there, you can actually find links to art battles in your city. If you're joining us for Art Battle Bournemouth, we have art battles go across the world, but also specifically across the UK. Uh, for example, I'm usually the colour commentator for Art Battle London, which is uh, what of the uh, London version of this event. But we're currently here tonight in the amazing city of Bournemouth. So join us on our Instagram, you know, drop a couple of comments, uh, drop, um, you know, have a little search or a hashtag for Art Battle Bournemouth. Get involved. I wonder how many people from around the world that are currently streaming and joining us tonight. And if you are, then thank you so much for joining us on this amazing stream. We're just getting ready and geared up to go for round two, and the anticipation is absolutely killing me. And of course, I hope the anticipation is killing all of you at home. <laughs> As the round two artists are slowly getting ready, getting their canvases, getting their paint set up, getting any reference pictures. It's really interesting how even before the, the actual 20 minutes in our battle has um, even started, I'm always really impressed at the different approaches by the artist. Um, some people have been using uh, miniatures of uh, paintings to then in basically try and then upscale and recreate. We've had people using reference photos. Um, for example, in the first round, I believe, it was our artist Lalani Ju was doing an amazing um, chalk drawing of a pomegranate and they literally had a cut in half pomegranate in their hand as a reference. We've also got people who have got um, just photos of friends if they're doing portraits. We've had people use objects. We've even had people, um, I think there was one at Art Battle London about three weeks ago, or maybe sorry, a couple of three months ago, should I say, where it was the back of a t-shirt that was used as a reference, which I was really, really stunned by. Like really, really interesting choice. So I can see they're all getting ready and getting set up the best they can. We're just seeing a couple of reference photos going up, a couple of unwrapping of fresh canvases. I bet the, I bet the mood currently live on the floor for the people actually live in attendance is absolutely electric. And I bet they're just raring to go and see these amazing artists compete in round two. Looks like our camera stream is going for a wonder to highlight the amazing pieces of art that we have seen already tonight. Or who knows, maybe we're just going to have a cheeky stopper for the bar. Yes, I'll have uh, two gin and tonics, please. Uh, Gordon's if you've got it. <laughs> now, nah, truth be told, I'm really sat at home enjoying a lovely hot lemon and water. These are some, some of the pieces from our first round. And... Honestly, such variety, such uniqueness, such amazing talent displayed by our artists, such incredible, incredible work. Remember, I know I keep banging on about it, but I feel that this is so important. Vote for your favorites, but also get involved. You can take these amazing pieces of art home with you if you can bid on them online at artbattle.com. So get involved. You could own such a unique piece of work by such an amazing artist. And of course, as I always say, show the artist some love. I feel like that might be becoming my catchphrase for our battle. I might need to get that printed on a few t-shirts. <laughs> Honestly, such amazing work displayed. 
So this would be the canvas that was done by, by artist Katie White. Such amazing use of paint, and they were using a spackle, I believe, to lay down these really thick, vivid lines before, like, but before them, they were starting with such beautiful, fluid motions with their paint. Oh, I believe we've got a few other pieces that there are currently on sale as well that maybe have not featured in the first round, but also amazing art done by amazing artists. So give them all a good shout, give them all a good support. Oh, I, I believe we can see a cameraman in the uh, mirror there. Hello, Mr. Cameraman. Oh, honestly, such amazing displays of work. I love how I had to say honestly there, and it just came out as Oni. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie. Okay, the other way. Wow, honestly, beautiful pieces of work. Anybody would be so, so incredibly looking fortunate to take those home and to have them displayed, you know, potentially in their home, in their work. Ooh. Wow, that's an amazing picture of Catwoman that we're just getting some detail on there. And honestly, for £30, that's an absolute steal for an amazing original work like that. of art being called Flower Child and wow amazing amazing stuff honestly it's see at this time of the month I've just been paid and I've already got a sneaking suspicion that I'll be spending an alarming amount of it on art battle art pieces <laughs> obviously going to such amazing pieces of art so you know what I would argue money incredibly well spent I believe this is uh, some of the art that was actually done by our first round contestants, but not in the first round. So these are other pieces of art that I believe that they have brought. Yes, that is the art by Bonnie Bevore. So you could be so fortunate enough to actually take some of these amazing pieces of art home with you. There's Susie Bimbo and Lilani June's artworks from round one, or re ready, just oh, so amazing, amazing to see. Whoop, I believe we are panning back around. And yes, we are back in the theatre floor. A little glimpse of some of our amazing audience live in attendance. Obviously, you can get involved in Art Battle by you can book your tickets online to actually go and see this amazing experience live, or you can join me on the live streams for Art Battle Bournemouth, Art Battle London, and we can just get nice and cosy, enjoy a good evening's worth of art, and really soak in what is I know is already going to be an amazing round two for Art Battle. A little away from our artists there. Hello, hello, everybody. That would be on the Apollo. We've then got Andy Nil. Look how we see Andy. Uh, oh, oh, wow. Andy Nil bringing the heat with the amazing outfit and the iconic helmet. Hello, I believe that was a wave. Bye. Da -da 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 -da. Yes, that is Sotep. Hello, Sotep. Getting a little glimpse of our amazing artists that we're featuring in round two. Oh, I believe we are currently getting ready to start. We are gearing up. We are getting ready for an amazing second round. Oh, apologies, um, audience watching us live at home. I believe that we are currently experiencing some minor technical difficulties here with the camera, but obviously I will keep you up to date and hopefully we can get this technical issue sorted prim and proper. And we are back. Uh, 
And we are underway in round two. If you're just joining us here live at our battle, hello, my name is Max Zorro. I will be your host online for this amazing art battle stream. We're currently in the midst of round two, where I will give the lowdown all the amazing artists that we are currently seeing. So, the amazing artists that are featuring today in round two is as follows. So I believe we are currently looking at Andy Nil there, who is one of the artists featuring. Uh, getting down some really, really interesting line work. Give a quick rundown of the other artists. So we've got Thomas Farrow, we've got Lucenart, Leopoldo, Isabel Kane, Andy Nil, and Sotep. The 20 minutes has started and already these artists are getting out the gates strong. So I believe this would be Leopoldo and wow, such amazing stroke work with, I believe it is charcoal, which is something we've not actually seen in the previous rounds and something I've not actually seen uh, in the last art battle I commentated on. So really, really excited to see how Leopoldo actually develops his canvas using uh, the, ch the charcoal. Already getting this amazing figure of what appears to be a, what I assume is something equine, possibly a horse. Yep, we, I think we can just get a glimpse of their um, uh, reference there. This is Isabel Keynes, and wow, Isabel starting so incredibly strong with such amazing use of the paints. We're getting this amazing rainbow mirage of yellows, blues, and pinks. So really, really strong out the gates for Isabel. We're now checking over the canvas of Thomas Farrow. Wow, Thomas really going to work, laying down some good base levels of these lovely blues and blacks that are really starting to um, just shape some of the figures, but it's really just laying down what I assume could be potentially some ocean work, potentially just a body of water. So really getting the texture in there and really playing around with those lovely blues, greys and greens to um, really lay down some color. I believe a crocodile or alligator in that reference picture, so it should be really interesting to check back in. We're now at Lucenart. So Lucenart is, wow, such vivid control over what I believe is the paint markers. As I mentioned earlier in the night, this is a, a technique that we've seen a, a few different artists use in the past and had great success with, a, uh, with over previous art battles. But the line work being displayed uh, is so, so clean. Like, it literally looks like not even a single micromillimeter is out of line there. And it almost looks like we're getting the edge impressions of a pencil, or potentially a crayon. So, really, really um, amazing work to see on that canvas. Should be really interesting to see how that develops. Such amazing control being displayed there by the artist. I believe we need to now stop in with Sotep, whose, whose name card is on the floor. Wow, so Sotep has already gotten such a really, like, there's almost this, like, lovely burnt brown base. And what ready, like, even this early uh, within their cameras, I'm seeing the glimpses of what potentially can be a skull. Now, we've seen skulls done um, by varying different um, competitors in the past. And I'm always so impressed how the artists are able to capture such depth and the color of the bone the really sunken in shadows of the eyes and the sort of the nave, the navel cavity. So already so, so impressed by the technique being displayed and just really getting to work with those brush strokes, just subtly wiping off small bits um, with the tissue paper there. And it's just getting absolutely stuck in a very harsh, but menacing, but also almost kind of like old and rustic skull being displayed on this canvas. So very, very exciting stuff to see. amazing stuff. I believe now we are checking back in with, I believe this is Andy Nil. And so, oh, and so Andy is really getting to work with um, the colors. So we saw some early line work being displayed and now it's just getting really stuck in with uh, getting everything colored in. Really liking the fact that um, Andy Nil is wearing the hat that is actually being displayed on the canvas. So really, really interesting. Very, very quirky. I really like it. Wow. Okay. So from the initial canvas that we were seeing from Leopoldo, the, um, I believe the original line work we were seeing is now been filled in with this beautiful deep red. 
and we're seeing um, a lot of the um, charcoal strokes now being uh, developed with, I believe, is acrylic paint potentially, but um, some form of um, thick base paint. We're getting tones of black and deep maroon, so really, really interesting to see that uh, change with the development because I initially thought it would have been a, an entirely charcoal workpiece. Again, oh, such amazing colours being displayed by Ismael Kane. Really just starting to dance, dance with um, little highlights in the left of the camera with um, some light blues and whites. But we've still got this lovely base of pinks, yellows, blues. There's almost something about it that's almost uh, very ethereal, very almost fairy-esque. Something that seems almost like a spirit or a dream, so very, very impressive. Wow, okay, getting some really, really strong um, line work and some colours actually laid down by, I believe, da, 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 let me check, this would be, oh, I believe this would be Lucenart? Yes, or potentially, nope, I'm sorry, I tell a lie, I believe this is um, Thomas Farrow getting stuck in there. We're now seeing the development of this um, alligator really come to life and we're getting the snuckle browns of the rocks uh, that's now been played into the background. So really, really interesting to see um, the development of the colours that's been put down. And if we go back to our first the canvas, which I do apologise, actually that I was correct the first time, it was indeed Lucinard and then Thomas Farron. We're seeing such um, amazing, amazing um, pen work being placed out on our first canvas and I'm, now we're just going to go over all of them and kind of like a little bit of an overview. Obviously our cameraman doing amazing work to capture all of this and to show everybody live at home whilst obviously I'm trying not to interfere too much with the artists who are absolutely just getting stuck in and hard at work. So we've had a good chunk of time in this second round. We've had everything from hats to alligators. We have got skulls to bright ethereal esque colors. And we've even got a, a number two pencil. So we're already seeing such amazing stuff being put down onto our canvases. Such varying techniques as well in this um, second round. Such varying um, styles and approaches. Um, so many different tactics used because that is something to uh, bear in mind audience is these artists are having to think about this very tactically as well because not only are they trying to win over the crowd, but also they're trying to best display their craft. And so do you start with a um, pencil and then go over the top? Do you start getting your background colors in? Do you start painting the canvas with big fluid things and then do details later? These are all things the artists are having to really consider and all of them are approaching in various different ways. So very, very impressive to see. Andy Nilgen stuck in there with some of the gold on the hat that's being displayed there. Really lovely command of these bold colours from Andy Neil, as well as Isabel. So that was definitely a similarity I can see between their arts. Um, the boldness of their colours are really coming through quite well. We are now seeing a development from our first canvas, which I believe is the artist Thomas Farrow. Oh wow, we're starting to see a figure uh, coming out of the... No, I, damn it, I was right the second time. That is Lucenart. Sorry, Thomas Farrow and Lucenart are uh, not on canvas one and two. They're on canvas two and one, sorry. So yes, and Lucenart is, I believe, drawing a figure that is now coming out the top of the pencil, almost as if it's like a cockpit of a plane, which is really, really amazing to see. I'm so, so impressed. Impressed? Impressed, should I say? <laughs> I'm so very impressed with the... Um, the actual command of um, the penmanship here, it's, it is so steady, almost like a, like a tattooist in terms of like the steadiness of the hand to create such clean looking lines. So very, very impressed with Lucenard, which then means, of course, this would be Thomas Farrow. Way I got there eventually. <laughs> but yes, amazing stuff from uh, Thomas Farrow there. Really starting to see the development of the alligator, but also there's such a beautiful motion in this canvas in terms of the way that the paints have been um, placed upon the canvas. And we're going to see almost like this really sort of thorough mood of almost like weather and shifting and changing in this particular canvas. So I'm very, very impressed. We've got Leopoldo there working on the um, right-hand side canvas, you can see. And we've got Isabel Keynes working away on this 
bright, beautiful canvas on the left of your screen. Honestly, the, the, I'm, I'm now starting to see a couple of figures um, on Isabel's canvas that I'm really, really um, loving. If anything, a bit of a parallel between uh, Leopoldo and Isabel is these figures that seem to be emerging from the canvases that are backed up by such um, bold colour. It's no easy feat to do to really play that balance of having an emerging figure while still um, keeping the actual boldness and stroke work of the actual colours. So very, very impressive from the pair of them. Obviously that will then bring us to Andy Nil on the left there and Sotep on the right. Sotep getting stuck in with these really lovely details uh, to back up the skull work that is now almost looming in from the top left hand side of the canvas as if it's trying to loom over you like a sense of dread or maybe um, like for me it reminds me of the, like the depiction of um, uh, death as in the, the, the literal god of death. Just seeing a little bit of a darker shading now going into the eyes. Like, as I previously mentioned, I'm so impressed with um, when people doing skull work, particularly how to capture, like, the actual, like, most like the density and the material of bone with various different techniques and shades and colors, but they always need to nail it. Also, the shading of the actual um, eye holes and the navel cavity on skulls is so incredibly hard to do. Oh, I believe uh, Andy Nill is now lay laying down some really fine details uh, with a, I believe that is potentially a pen, yes! So we've got our solid colour work and now we are getting some pen to outline these amazing bold colours and the depiction of what I only assume it would be a, it, it's an old, it looks like an old fashioned uh, 1940s esque safari cap which I'm sure Andy Nil is, uh, definitely look at it must be an Andy Nil iconic piece. Wow, oh my god, such amazing motion coming from this canvas. So from the uh, initial start of the really dark outlines that have now just been displayed with such amazing brushstroke technique to capture this this wild, beastly energy. So Leopoldo there really capturing the essence of the, the bucking horse in terms of its actual motion, but also the, um, the untamable nature of a horse trying to be ridden, but just cannot be controlled and that's really coming through now with their actual technique and the colors being used so 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 impressed just laying down some more um some darker works in the background there of the uh, deep red i think if we are now going to quickly pop back over to isabel and oh wow Lo i'm loving the figures uh that in this almost uh, really playful pink are emerging just the softest of um, drop shadows or off shadows in white there. Really, this canvas is giving me ideas of elation and just pure unbridled joy and celebration. So to really capture that as a mood on a canvas so almost effortlessly with the cascading of colors and the technique being displayed is truly, truly incredible stuff. Amazing, amazing work from Isabel being displayed right now. Honestly, the, the variety of colours that we've had in the second round in terms of uh, the different pieces of work is just honestly stunning. I'm, I'm adoring every single canvas that I come across for so many different reasons. But one thing I can definitely say that unifies these amazing artists is everyone's command of colour in this uh, particular round of art battle has been absolutely on point. It has been absolutely stunning to see. So working really, really hard there to just kind of get the edges of that canvas, like the, the figures almost rising above as if they are quite literally jumping for joy, but it's it's still got this air of like, like celebration. But as I mentioned before, there's something almost spiritual about it. There's something almost um, ethereal, as if like it's like a celebration in a dream. Wow, okay. Really liking the detail that's being... Um, laid down here and obviously i'm not going to do the same mistake twice don't you worry i'm not going to get thomas farrow and <laughs> mixed up again but thomas oh honestly i really love the blending of all the colors and the actual brushstroke techniques being used on this because it really is giving this um the looming nature of the what i assume is the crocodile or alligator because i'll be very honest my animal basis knowledge between those two is very minimal but it's capturing almost this 
predator energy. So in a similar way that we've seen the um, the the wild stallion being captured with its raw energy, there is a menace and a sneak being displayed onto this canvas. It's being captured so incredibly well. Okay, so that was uh, that was Thomas Farrow. We're now Lucinart. And oh, that is honestly, that is so, so goddamn cool. Amazing command over the, um, the, the black line work. Literally, it's, as I mentioned before, it's like not a single thing is out of place. It's so clear and so vivid. There's so much expression and character being displayed on this canvas. And also, sometimes all you can describe something is, is badass. And I can definitely say that canvas has got such effortless, badass, cool energy to it. It's a very, very cool stuff from Lucifer. Oh, who turned off the lights? <laughs> wow, honestly. So going from our right hand side all the way over to our left, I believe that would be Stoker on the far right hand side, Andy Nil in the middle there. We've then got Leopoldo uh, on the far left hand side there. So really just looking at all these different canvases now as we are very very vastly running out of time but these artists are keeping their cool under pressure and really just kind of getting these lovely fine details laid down to really stamp their art to try and get through to the final god like it, there's such a beautiful capturing of motion within this canvas um done by leopoldo there and a very, actually, a very, very similar story in terms of um, Isabel Keynes, in terms of the actual, the joy and the motion that's being spread, but both in two vastly different ways. One of them being more animalistic in nature, and one of being more, almost human in nature, but more sort of, as I mentioned, this dreamscape that I feel is being presented. So very, very cool people were being presented. So, so impressed. I'll leave me now stopping by Andy Nil with the amazing, amazing cap. Oh, wow. Okay. So we've now got a border around this um, amazing safari hat, and we're getting these little um, sort of rectangular like sections of the colors being displayed there. We've got gold, silvers, blues, blacks, and we've got a. Oh, we've got some typography in the bottom right corner there. If I can just try and make that out. I believe it says signs of men oh no shades of mental health oh oh i'm so oh, i love that oh andy nil with it like every there that's really for me just bringing just another level to an already stunning piece of art honestly i love that statement oh the shades of mental health oh amazing work andy god that's so goddamn cool oh i really do love the job sometimes <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm loving the, the drip we are getting from the skull now. And we're really getting to see the amazing texture. And I love the fact that I feel like there's been a very, very clear choice by Sonetep to really focus on having that looming energy from the top left-hand side of the canvas as it then fades out to the remainder and the white of the rest of the canvas. And it's I think it's such a I think it's such an intelligent choice to do because it really gives across like a different unique perspective. It feels like it's not being contained within the borders of the canvas. It's in stealth is in, instead of that, in my opinion, it almost feels like the skull is imposing itself onto the canvas. It is looming around like this dark spiritual presence. We're seeing such amazing technique with the brush strokes really get over the just the detail of the bone within the skull. So massively, massively impressive from Sotep. Oh, I believe we have got Andy Nil doing a... So we've got a step away because I believe Andy Nil is potentially done with their canvas. And honestly, I can understand why the typography, the shades, the actual capturing of the cap and the levels. I'm so, so impressed with this piece of work. Very, very cool indeed. So from our right hand side, going all the way to the left, I believe we have got Leopoldo on the far right hand side. We've then got Isabel Keynes, moving on to Thomas Farrow, and then finally right at the end, it was Lucenart. Surely not long left now for our artists. I believe Andy Nill is then um, actually having the opportunity to talk about their art a bit more. Oh, so this, 
with shades of mental health. So goddamn cool. Hello, Andy. Amazing stuff. Absolutely smashed it. Oh, wow. Well and that's it. Sorry, I'm only just noticing because um, we haven't really checked in with Lucenart for the final uh, piece of the canvas. Just loving the detail of the actual galaxy that they've been able to achieve. Um, this is Thomas Farrow with God, such an amazing um, capturing of like the animal kingdom within that alligator. With such a looming dark presence has been displayed. So 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 hard to do. We're then seeing a glimpse of uh, Isabel Kane's work, the bright celebration being presented in front of us. We have then got um, Lucenart with, oh, blank wall ahead. See, I love when artists not only impose their, 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 like, their very unique style, but also they really, really get to kind of show off like their brand as well as an artist. And I think that Lucenart has absolutely achieved that just so incredibly well. If you are just joining us now to the stream, hello everybody that is watching live. This is Art Battle Bournemouth, and we have just finished the second round to what is already heating up to be a absolute classic art battle. If you want to get involved, now is the time if you've been staying with us for the first and second rounds, because voting is now on for the second round. Sadly, only two of these artists can go through to the final, so it's up to you, our amazing audience at home, to vote for your favourites. So please sign up, get involved at artbattle.com, and show these artists some love. As well, if you would like to actually purchase any of these and uh, be lucky enough to take these artwork home, then you can bid for them on artbattle.com as well as checking out all of the artists that have been involved in tonight's Bournemouth um, competition. So you can maybe go get their details, send them a bit of a message of support, maybe buy their work, just show them all the love in the world because they have absolutely smashed it and they deserve all of your adoration. Wow, honestly, just wow. What a second round. We've seen looming skulls that have been beautifully captured and posing on canvases. We've seen dark, menacing alligators and the wild spirit of something equine and, and very stallion-based. We've seen a celebration in pink, blues, raspberry, yellows and everything in between. And we've seen just the most well put together in technique-wise in terms of line work of a pe pencil rocket launching into a canvas galaxy what more can you say after a second round like that just when you think the first round was pretty going to be a modern classic the second round comes in and just delivers as much oh and of course the shades of mental health being showed in hues of blue gold silver and black on what i assume is an andy till classic piece of the old safari cap amazing amazing stuff so as i've already previously mentioned get involved and vote for your favorites at artbattle.com get involved on our instagram as well at art battle i'm going to quickly bob to get myself another lovely drink of hot tea and lemon to make sure that i'm still able to speak to you guys for this amazing final round and i will see you very very shortly where we will know who our final four contestants are and obviously we'll do a little quick roundup of all the artists that have um, uh, performed for us live tonight. And I'll catch you in a sec.
Hello and good evening, everybody that is now just joining us on the Art Battle stream. If you've been with us the whole time, then of course you know the rest. But for those of you just joining us now, my name is Max Oral, and I am your commentator tonight for this amazing stream of Art Battle Bournemouth. We have had two amazing first rounds uh, tonight. We've had some amazing artists, and what you're seeing on screen is the art from the second round just there. Such amazing piece of work being displayed. Uh, to quickly go over the artists that we just saw within that second round, we had... So, in that second round, we were treated to the works of... On the far left, in the the black pen, the black pen drawing of the pencil, launching into space, that was uh, Lucent Art. The alligator you can see in the left of your screen was done by the artist Thomas Farrow. The bright celebration of the cascade of colours was done by Isabel Keynes. Uh, the um, the wild stallion being portrayed in blacks and reds was done by Leopoldo. Uh, the shades of mental health in blues and greens of the 1950s style safari cap was done by Andy Nil. And finally, on the far right hand side, the skull work looming over the canvas was done by Sotep. So those are your artists that are featured in this art battle second round. I'll quickly go over them again. So we've had Thomas Farrow, Lucent Art, Leopoldo, Isabel Keynes, Andy Nil, and Sotep. All of them have done amazing work. And honestly, I have been blown away by not everybody in the second round, but also everyone in the first round as well. So to give a little bit of love to the people in the first round that you may have missed, we had the artists Susie Bimbo, Katie White, Bonnie Babor, Clover DeWang, Nancy, Vi Nancy Violet Downs, and Lilani June, who all of them as well absolutely smashed it out of the park. We, such, we, we got to see such amazing works of color and technique in the first round. And then such boldness and creativity in the second as well. So I am genuinely just blown away by all the work that the artists have uh, been able to do in just an amazingly just short space of time. But obviously, that's that's the beauty of art battle. You know, working to that twenty minute time frame, the excitement, the competition. But above anything else, all of us are able to witness and get to be a part of these amazing live acts of art, which. In that case, I think everybody's a winner. But, of course, not everybody can win. So, vote for your favourites. Get involved online and register to vote so you can vote for your favourites if you've seen any tonight at artbattle.com. Not only that, but if you would wish to be lucky enough to take some of these amazing pieces of artwork home, you can bid on them at the Art Battle website if you just look at the link at the bottom left of your screen. To give the uh, cheekiest of plugs as well, my name is Max Oral. You can find me on TikTok at Max underscore Oral. That is M A X X underscore O R R E L L. What can I say? My name has lots of doubles. You can also find me that. Uh, um, you can also find me under my Instagram handle, which is also M A X X underscore O R R E L L. That is Max Oral. And I will be one of your commentators if you join us at Our Battle London, Our Battle Bournemouth. Uh, our Battle Brighton, for example, then chances are I will be the one joining you on this live stream as we get to share this evening together of amazing, amazing art here in the amazing city of Bournemouth. Getting a little glimpse there of some of the second round art pieces there, but I believe that the stage is now going to be cleared in preparation for our final, which I don't know about you guys at home, I am absolutely buzzing for. Currently, I'm still awaiting any confirmation of who we actually have in the final, but it might be just as exciting to actually have it where we will find out together as we will be able to see which four artists are returning for the pivotal final round. And honestly, I cannot wait. We have seen such amazing artists do such amazing work. So if you haven't voted for your favorite, then please, please do. And as I always say, 
showed him some love. Oh, I believe that was something from our amazing host of the evening. Oh, the goodness wonder, she said something about beans. <laughs> Maybe I'm losing it. I hope all of you watching the art battle live with us on the stream today. I hope you're all having a fantastic night and I hope that you're enjoying these amazing works of art being done in front of our very eyes just as much as I am. That's, uh, that was Izzy just there. I think a couple of the artists now inspecting everybody else's canvases and they are going to be slowly taking them out into the foyer where obviously somebody will be lucky enough to actually take these amazing pieces of artwork home. So make sure to sign up Check it out on artbattle.com and show the artist some love. So, if you're relatively new to Art Battle, as I've already previous gone, previously gone through the stream in terms of the structure of the competition, two rounds where we have five to six artists all competing in 20 minute time limits to create their best canvases they can possibly create. They get to display such unique techniques that are very specific to them as artists. They get to display um, so many different things from portraits to sort of like still life drawings. You have things of space, graffiti, murals, for example. We've seen so many different styles. Once the 20 minute timer is up, then you then it's up to you yes you the amazing audience that will either be live in attendance or watching it with myself on the stream where you then get to vote for your favorites that you want to see in the final now in the final it's the top two artists from each round duking out one final time to win the title of, of being tonight's champion at art battle bournemouth now when you're voting a couple of things that i always like to say is really good to bear in mind one of which is obviously vote your favorite um, artists. So if you're already aware of their work, then show them some love. Vote for your favorite piece of art. But not only that, vote for your favorite performances tonight. Which artists really captured your imagination? Which techniques did you see that really, really just fundamentally impressed you? Which actual performances uh, in front of the live audience and um, the audience in attendance really blew you away? I don't know whether you just heard that, but Bonnie, Bonnie Beaver or Bonnie Beaver has just been announced for the final. Oh, I believe we are having our other artists announced for the final. So they're just going to get their art materials, they're going to get their drink, they're going to get their name tag, five minutes. Yes, indeed, five minutes. Get your art materials, get yourselves ready, soaked up.
Hello everybody that is watching Art Battle live with us on the stream. As you can see, we are getting ready for our final round. If you are just joining us currently, hello, my name is Max Oral. I will be your commentator tonight for Art Battle London. Check out the link at artbattle.com. And we are underway with our final. All of the artists getting stuck in, but we have got our final four. So, to give you the rundown, if you just give bear with me, I will tell you who our amazing contestants are when we get to see their canvases a little bit closer up. But we're in our final. We've had two amazing rounds here. At our battle Bournemouth and now we are set up for what shall be an absolutely stunning final my name is Max Sorrell I will be your host for this evening on our battle live you can get involved artbattle.com or you can check our Instagram at our battle 
the key thing is these these four finalists have been voted on by you guys to feature again into the final you wanted to see their artwork again so please 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 make sure to vote for your favorites sign up to vote at artval.com so i believe we are gonna go visit oh i just need to get around so we can see here's canvas Amazing stuff, so I believe this is from our second round. This was Lucenart. Lucenart already getting stuck in with the black paint pen, which he used so, so incredibly well within the first round. So already just getting those laser focused um, uh, lines in, such amazing uh, line work uh, with the black uh, paint marker. So really, really interested to see what we can ex uh, expect from Lucenart. And then I believe we also then going next to Sozi Bimbo on our second canvas who did an amazing portrait within the first round and is now, I believe, doing a, another portrait but really focusing on like these lovely tinges of burnt reds and slight darker shading for like the eyes and chin. So hopefully we'll be seeing uh, some more amazing, amazing work from Susie Bimbo and just seeing Susie's command of colours and the portraits really just evoking such emotion in that first round. So really, really excited to see what can be reduced again. Loosen art there again, really getting stuck in, just making sure those lines are just almost like, dare I say, almost perfect. Like such incredible command over that paint marker. We've then got Bonnie Beaver or Bonnie Beaver. I need to... I would have to absolutely have to speak to Bonnie to double check on that last name. But we saw Bonnie really, really have such amazing command over just the way that Bonnie commanded light and shading. And again, already, like hardly any time has passed and Bonnie's getting stuck in with this amazing um, sort of capturing of what I believe is an apple. And already the shading, the lighting, this is definitely something that is um, must be a massive, massive skill set within Bonnie's artwork because they are absolutely nailing it again in the second round. So it will be so, so exciting to see how that canvas develops. And finally, I believe we're then going to the end canvas, which would be Thomas Farrow from round two. Thomas in the second round uh, that he was in, gave us this amazing capturing of a crocodile, this very menacing, but also very beautiful, deep sort of like capturing of this, um, this predator in its natural habitat. So really exciting to see that. I believe we're getting the outlines of a shark currently on the far left canvas. And um, on Bonnie's canvas currently, we are seeing um, what looks to be maybe potentially another apple or tomato, but we're seeing this lovely uh, capturing of um, fruit and plant and fauna. And again, just commanding the shading on that so, so well. Thomas Farrow doing, uh, really getting some good bases down on what I believe is some form of bass asking shark, potentially, or a whale shark. You know, whichever shark has the, the big, long, and gale onto mouth. <laughs> and if my memory sounds me correct, I believe it's one of those two. So it should be interesting to see whether or not we get any surrounding blue with the capturing the sea uh, from Thomas there. We are now having a look at the first two that we were joined. So let's go and check in on Lucenart and with Susie Bimbo. Susie Bimbo, uh, again, just amazing, amazing like brush techniques, really great, strong lines. Love the way that she seems to just really capture the energy of somebody's face and portrait. Like you, you can look into the eyes and the actual um, face that's being drawn and really see an emotion, really have an evocative feeling based around that, which is obviously such an incredibly tough thing to do. So amazing, amazing work from Susan. Returning to Bonnie and I'm just so impressed with the commanding of shading. I, I go as far as saying like this might be some of the some of the best that I've seen in our battle. It's so, 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 so good. Almost uh, the, looking like the representation of faces there on the, um, well, I believe, the tomato that's being drawn on the canvas. A potential figure maybe looming out of the uh, vegetation there. We're back with loose nods, and if we can just bob around the back of his cap and we can see what looks to be, if I'm corrected, a beautiful piece of bread. 
but also like I'm noticing um, a difference from the first one in terms of like some really specific dot work done on what I believe is the body of the bread there. We're seeing the little etchings of a pencil which we saw uh, uh, featured as a fantastic, just effortlessly cool rocket in the um, second round. But also maybe uh, potentially seeing uh, the displaying of a paintbrush there as well. So maybe we're going to see some more um, actual artistic motifs in terms of, um, you know, artistic tools being represented on the canvas there. So really, really exciting to see um, how Lucent Art brings that to this final round. If you are just joining us here on Art Battle Live, this is the final round of Art Battle Bournemouth, where one of these amazing artists that have already come first and second within their respected rounds of round one and round two, now competing to blow you all away to hopefully be crowned the Art Battle Champion for Art Battle Bournemouth. So please get involved, go to artbattle.com and register to vote where you can then vote for your favourites as well as bidding on some of these amazing pieces of work that you can then be lucky enough to take home with you. So as I always like to say, show the artists some love. Amazing stuff from Thomas Farrow, really just got an amazing command over blues and greens. Like we saw really good fluid motion uh, captured with the painting of water in the first round that we saw Thomas in. And again, just absolutely bringing that into this final body as well. Pacing these, um, these very like subtle, soft expression looming out of the vegetation here. You've got beautiful sharpness with the color and contrast with the branches and the jackedness of it, but very soft expressions are being displayed in what I assume is a tomato. Amazing, amazing canvas. Just amazing colored shading work being displayed. We have then got Susie. Um, Susie is currently just laying down these luscious pinks and blues again. I'm so, so absolutely impressed with the work um, being um, displayed by Susie there. Just really capturing the colors so well. The softness in the expression is now being really playfully matched with this bold explosion of color aiding from the hair in these beautiful pinks and purples. Oh wow, okay, so we're now stopping in with Loosen Art and it seems like we're getting a combination of a food and art motif, which is super, super cool. We're getting this lovely oozing over the pencil and paintbrush in what could potentially be a sandwich, maybe a little burgy here or there. Well, I mean, it'll be probably most likely one of the two. And hey, there's a pint of San Miguel. Ah, oh, go on, go on, Loosen Art. I mean, I won't lie, I can't I can think of anything better than creating an amazing piece of work in our battle than having a good pint to go with it. Absolutely outstanding stuff from Lucent out there. Really, really impressed, just like, as I, as I keep mentioning, but I think it's something which really can't be understated. The level of control you need to get these lines so, so dead on. It is no easy feat. A lot of people can um, wrongly assume that working with these types of paint markers is quite easy. I would honestly beg to differ. It is such a difficult skill set, like anything in art. So for Lucent Art to be, God, like almost weaponized in really capturing down these thick, beautiful, swirling black lines is stupidly impressive. So really, really, really impressive stuff there. I believe we are currently behind one of our amazing cameramen. We're now approaching the other sides of our finalist canvas. So I believe we are now touching base again with the amazing Thomas Farrow. So, So Thomas Farrow there capturing such an amazing um, aquatic scene there, really playing with like these motifs of these like really beautiful dark blues. 
definitely something which I've noticed from uh, Thomas from the first going into the second round is their amazing command over Shades of Blue and the capturing of um, Aqua and Water. Really, really impressive stuff. Uh, it's absolutely like no easy feat to really capture the fluidity of water in such a beautiful and expressive way, but I honestly think he is currently knocking out of the park. Bonnie as well. I mean, if we've got the ying of the capturing of water from Thomas there, then we've, then we've got the yang in terms of Bonnie capturing light so incredibly well. The light being displayed. Oh, I believe we are just currently resetting uh, one of the visuals for the streams. If you would all bear with us. Whilst we are doing that, I will give a little bit of a shameless plug. My name is Max Oral. I am your host for Art Battle Bournemouth. Please give me a follow at Max underscore Oral. That is M A W X underscore O W R E W L on TikTok and on Instagram, where you can see some of my uh, personal work and my commentating work, which I do with Art Battle London, Art Battle Bournemouth, and Art Battle Brighton. So we've got Bonnie here, really just getting these fine details now, like we saw um, uh, as she achieved in her first round performance, just really getting these like subtleties in and the way that she's able to capture light so so effortlessly well with these drawings i'm so blown away with the level of shading the level of detail and the capturing of the way the light is bouncing off this vegetation and fauna it's honestly it's incredible incredible stuff to see especially when you consider that these artists have only got 20 minutes to do these amazing pieces of work oh wow Susie again, the amazing Susie Bimbo, just just showing off such amazing command of colour. These beautifully chaotic, scattered little sprites of blue cascading from the shoulders. These long, luscious um, strokes of purple and pink and blue cascading from the hair. But there's a there's a beautiful softness being captured within the face. The lips are are alive just like the eyes are so switched on and alive you almost look like you can you can gauge an emotional response being given through the windows of these eyes into the canvas which is just beautiful to behold such a beautiful beautiful stunning piece of work just such great commands of these bright bursts of colors especially working um, with portraits as well so very very impressive stuff from Susie Bimbo there Wow, okay, so Lucenart absolutely getting stuck in in this final and just doing absolute wizardry with these paint markers here. Just getting such lovely little details of dots, etchings, lines, but every single one of them you can just notice it almost like the micromillimeter. It's just the cleanest lines that I've seen in a long time. So massively, massively impressed by um, just the technique of Lucenart's command over these paint markers being displayed not only in general, but also in this final. So we're seeing some amazing detail just being topped up there by the amazing Susie Bimbo, just really getting in these like little tiny shades of color, just to really just add little sparks and spangles to an already beautiful, vibrant piece of work. So I believe now we are currently looking over at Bonnie's canvas again and these fine little details of colour are just being displayed onto the canvas and honestly I think Bonnie has really brought the A game as well. I mean everybody has in this final but in terms of uh, really making sure that like um, light and shadow is really nailed, Bonnie has absolutely done that and so I am absolutely blown away but also I'm liking the more turn to like the surrealist um, aspect of the art compared to the first one where it was uh, some, it was the tomatoes captured very in their essence in their environment with the ants but we're seeing these figures erupting from these um from the fauna and the plants that we're seeing on the canvas almost like these haunting little spirits kind of similar to um the old sort of like vaudevillian uh, comedy and tragedy um signs wow amazing thomas farrow absolutely just having such amazing command over these shades of blue and giving such beautiful motion to their canvas to really capture the essence of a majestic animal such as this, which I believe I said was a bull shark, potentially a whale shark. Really quickly if you can, subscribe really hard, think now if you can, like 
decision on your story to hold up. Yeah, we, we need to get you organized in bed in time for work in the morning, etc. Alright, cheers. A little announcement there from our amazing host. So just over the shoulder now, we're seeing little fine details being added by Bonnie just to really kind of just get the detail in on the stick because these artists do not have long left. They've had a good chunk of their time. So they will be racing to get these final details nailed and to make sure that they are absolutely showing off their best work to make sure that they get voted to win this final. Oh, we've had a development of a plate with more detail being placed down by Lucenart. And I believe we're seeing actually the actual uh, typography on one of the uh, pens there featured. Uh, it's got the little tag of Lucenart on there, which I absolutely love to see. God, the level of detail that Lucenart has brought to this final is nothing short of almost surgical in nature. It is a beautiful combination of almost like a scientific methodology being executed in such an artistic way and what i mean by that is there's such a surgical nature in how loose art works you're looking at the concentration and how every dot every single line is just absolutely lasered onto that um, canvas and there's such great control and command as i've already stated working with paint markers like that is no easy feat but loose art is making it almost like breathing he's making it look truly effortless Speaking of effortless, the effortless beauty that we are getting um, from the middle canvas there from. So just making sure I was double checking on names from Susie, of course, sorry, Susie Bimbo. Susie has really just captured both beauty and colour so well in both of these rounds. Uh, similar story, actually for Thomas Barrow capturing like the majesties of the animal kingdom with such beauty and grace, but also such deep command over these luscious blues and greens that you would you would swear that you'd like, you can paint in your mind's eye when you think of like beautiful oceans. And Thomas is just able to translate that to a canvas so incredibly well. Now I'm just getting a few darker overtones of the blues within the ocean for Thomas Barrow there. I believe we can get a slight glimpse to uh, the canvas next door with just a couple of other little fine details being added. Soft speckles of the actual surface of the animal. Just little fine details now. All of these artists will be just trying to get down their last little bits. I think we're seeing Susie Bimbo really just adding the long strikes to the hair. We're seeing Lucenar adding some more typography and just really nailing in these senses of style and detail. We are vastly running out of time for this final, so please, please, please go to ourbattle.com, get involved, show these artists some love, and vote for your favourite, because you, yes, you, have the power to decide who will walk away the champion of Art Battle Bournemouth. Will it be Bonnie? Will it be Susie? Will it be Thomas? Or will it be Lucenart? You have the power to decide, and also you get the power to maybe take one of these amazing pieces of work home. Just think about that for a second. You've got the opportunity to not only witness these pieces of art as being made in real time in a competition by these amazing artists, but you could support them by buying their art and also having that in your home, in your office, but you could be the proud owner of these amazing pieces. I know that I'm gonna definitely be bidding on these pieces Literally, the minute I hop off the stream, I'm going to be looking to see if I can absolutely get one of these because... Oh, in case you didn't just hear that from our amazing host of the evening, we are in the final minute of this competition. This has been an amazing, amazing modern classic final. I have been so giddy and so, so honoured to commentate over this event. We've got Lucian up frantically trying to get these little details down. We're seeing... Uh, I believe what the typography that is saying, another serving. Oh, amazing. Effortlessly cool. Another serving, please. Do you know what, Lucent Art? Yes, we do want another serving of your art. And we've been very lucky to get two servings of Lucent Art's um, displays there. So I believe Susie uh, next door is also just getting these last little bits of colour, really cascading. Oh, oh, wow. Last minute, she's placing some white highlights on the edges of the fringe. Four, three, two, one. Two, one, that is everything 
What a final, what an absolute showcase by these amazing artists. What a final. These four artists absolutely brought their goddamn A game. I am so genuinely honored to be able to commentate over this final and to actually commentate for our battle as a whole. Because it's moments like this that I really just appreciate the actual craftsmanship of the artist and all of them showing off such amazing talents. Susie Bimbo there with just the most beautiful, chaotic, irreverent, spiritual looking um, portrait with such beauty and pleasant stillness captured in the face amongst this wild, beautiful cascade of hair. We then moved to the effortlessly cool, the surgical, the absolutely fine details of Lucenart, who has given us this amazing art and food inspired canvas with some amazing typography, laser focus, and just unbelievable paint marker technique. We then come to the amazing, just such beautiful capturing of fauna and life of, of oh, excuse me, nearly had to sneeze then. <laughs> Could you imagine midstream of Bonnie there? But yeah, so Bonnie has commanded the colors, the vegetation, the art, the actual lighting and shadow is some of the best shadow work and lighting I've seen in any art battle final performance. It's so incredible but also adding this really pleasant surrealist twist in their final piece of work compared to their first. So very, very, very cool thing to see. Such a great development and what a piece of art. Finally, we have got the amazing Thomas Farrow who has been just treating us to such amazing capturing of the energies of the animal kingdom. We had the menacing alligator in round one, only to then be, be met with this beautiful, strong, powerful, but almost gentle giant-esque depiction of a whale shark, just deeply immersed in this beautiful, gorgeous, just absolutely beautifully captured tones of blue. Like, I, I am so generally impressed how he's able to capture the fluidity of water, but also the perfect tone of this beautiful, deep ocean looking green and blue. And that's it. The artists will collect their canvases now. So it is up to you. Yes, you, our amazing audience watching live at home but also in attendance at the amazing event itself. It's time for you to vote for your favorite. So head over to rbattle.com, register to vote. If you need to look at the uh, website address, it's in the bottom left of your screens. That is rbattle.com and vote for your favorites. You will not have long to vote for your winner. So please, please, please head over to the website right now, do yourself a favor and vote for these amazing, amazing artists. I know that I'm going to be. What more can you say? What a final, what a performance, and we will eagerly be waiting on tender hooks to see who will be the final winner of Art Battle Bournemouth. Such amazing displays of talent. Genuinely, I am blown away. For everyone, that, if, whether you're just joining me now towards the end of the art battle or whether you've been with me for the full two and a bit hour stream, thank you so, so much for getting involved with Art Battle. If, you, if you'd like to try and find out when an art battle is coming to a city near you, then you can check us out at artbattle.com so you can see how you can actually attend one of these things and maybe get involved as one of our wild cards. If you like some of the commentating that I've done and want to check out some of my personal stuff, you can go to my TikTok and my Instagram page, which is of the same name, which is M-A-X-X underscore O-R-R-E-L-L. -L. That is Max Oral, spelt M-A-X-X underscore O-R-R-E-L-L. -L. It's been such a genuine pleasure to witness this art being done live in front of our eyes, as it always is with Art Battle. But it's been a genuine pleasure to share this experience with the audience at home. Because I literally, I obviously have been commentating, but I've just been in awe of the pieces of work that have been displayed. And I'm so very lucky to actually share these thoughts and feelings with you guys in real time. So please get involved. And thank you for getting involved with our battle today.
I'm now going to be quickly taking my final quick break of the evening to get myself topped up with a nice hot lemon and water because it's always good to look after your voice, darlings. But I will be back very, very shortly after a very quick break where then I will have the absolute pleasure of announcing to the live audience at home who has won the art battle final in Bournemouth. Just to remind you before I quickly shoot off, the people you are voting for is the artists from round two in the final were Thomas Farrow and Lucent Art. From round one, we had the amazing Susie Bimbo and Bonnie Beaver. Check them out, go show them some love. What an amazing performance. And I will see you at the announcing of the winner of Art Battle Bournemouth.
So, I believe that will be myself wrapping up the stream very, very shortly. <sighs> what a winner, what an art battle. Honestly, tonight has been outstanding. I, when I just when I think that every art battle can't get better, it always seems to. A couple of signing off points. Obviously, go to the website artbattle.com where we you can see the full lineup of all the people that we had performed tonight at Art Battle Bournemouth. 
You can check out the winners. You can check out the people that went to the finals. You can check out all of their Instagrams and show them all some love. You can also buy any pieces of their work. This is really, really important. If you really want to represent and show some love to the artists themselves, this is the best way to possibly do it. As we're going in and just seeing now the empty stage as the evening draws to a close. Thank you everybody so, so much for joining us here live at Art Battle. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did and I hope that you really got to experience just all the, the amazing atmosphere that we're able to try and bring to you guys on the live stream. This has been Max Oral. I'm signing off now for Art Battle Bournemouth. Thank you very, very much for joining and tuning in and we will catch you at the next Art Battle Live. Peace.